So first thing first, we're over here on the news page on the Manjaro website. And here is where you can see a rough overview of everything that's actually changed. Now for this video, we're going to be focusing on this paragraph right here, which is their KDE edition. And the primary update to this was to KDE 5.21 with a lot of visual changes. Now, like I said, we're going to be getting into this more in just a little bit, but the app launcher is new. There's a new settings menu and the system monitor has gotten improvements. If I go ahead and scroll down here, their installer, Calamaris, has gotten some improvements, which we're about to jump into. Primarily to do with automatically detecting where somebody is throughout the setup process, well, where somebody is in the world. And then finally, this version of Manjaro will ship out with the 5.10 LTS kernel. So with all that said, let's go ahead and just actually install this machine here. So we're going to go ahead, click up here to open up the Manjaro installer. And then once it is opened up, we're just going to go ahead and run through it real quick. So we're going to select American English, uh, location New York, I have a VPN on, so that's probably why it's not getting me right away. Uh, English default, which is perfect, so it did that good. Now we're going to go ahead and erase the entire disk and we're going to add a swap to file. Uh, that's generally what I recommend you do when you go ahead and install this. Do make sure if you're installing this on your actual machine, you select the proper hard drive. So you do that by hitting that up there. You can encrypt your system and change your boot record stuff if you want to, but generally you're just going to want to keep it as is. You can encrypt your system if you do want that added layer of security, but you will have to type in an additional password to access all your data. So next, so and I'm going to fill this out real quick. There we go. I generally never log in automatically and I always use the same password as the admin account just so I'm not fumbling multiple passwords around. Let's go ahead and go next. Here it's going to give you a rundown of exactly what it's going to do. Go ahead and read through that and make sure everything's right and then click install and install now. So this might take a minute to do so I will be right back when it is complete. Alright so now the installation process is complete so we're just going to hit this restart now and hit done and wait for it to boot on back into our system. And at this point, do remove that USB you used to install Manjaro, because depending on your boot order settings, you could just end up in an installation loop automatically booting into the USB, and you don't want that. Alright, so we rebooted our system and logged in. This is our first boot of Manjaro 21.0. We see we have a couple updates available, and you can see over here the installation medium is gone, so we are actually in our system. So let's go ahead and close this out. You do actually, you do have the Manjaro uh, welcome screen here. Primarily, you have release info, wiki, readme. If I go to release info, you can see the screen that we were looking at earlier. So we have our KDE edition, which is what we're in right now. But here's where you could also read up on their GNOME and XFCE official releases. For now, let's go ahead and close that out and check out some of the new features that we mentioned earlier. So the very first one, which comes with Plasma 5.21, is the new application launcher. Which you can see here, we have the two column layout, one with the categories on the sides and the actual applications over here. And if I go over to favorites, you can see it has the larger icons versus the actual applications list with the smaller icons, names, and descriptions. Now generally most people when they're in KDE Plasma, they end up editing this anyway by right clicking here, showing alternatives, and you have all your different application menus here. The application launcher is what we have selected, so you can go ahead and change that out if you don't like the update. It is definitely a welcomed update. And speaking of welcome updates, we're going to go to our system monitor. The system monitor has seen some improvements, so if we go ahead and open it up, we can see on this overview screen we have our three primary concerns in bar graph form. So we have our memory, our disk, and our CPU. If we go down, we have network and system, so you, we can see our different network connections, rate, and the actual speeds of the connection. And then over on system, we have some important information, such as our host name, our operating system, our QT version, our KDE frameworks version, and our KDE plasma version, which we can see currently I am running 5.21.3. And then down here, it gives you an overview of your applications. And all of this you can see in more detail by going over to applications waiting for this to load up so it brings up our CPU usage for the specific application. And it does do it in a little bar graph form you can see there, so it gives you a little overview of the history. You quit applications and do the show details sidebar, so right here you have an even better view of what is actually going on within your system. Then here we have history, so it actually kind of keeps track of what's going on. You can see that it is um, going in reverse as far as populating the data. Then we have our processes, which goes down to a system level so we can see everything that's going on. 
and then we have the option to add a new page. Just for giggles, I'm gonna go ahead and add a new page. And here you can actually go ahead and completely customize everything that's going on so you can actually input sensors. So for example, if you wanted to add your CPU temperature, you could probably use the LM sensor or LMS sensor command and import that that way. So that is a wonderful application. Now another update that I'm not really gonna show is the media player widget has gotten some UI updates and it will include a list of the various applications that are actually playing music or media. Now with that said, we're gonna do a general overview of the system. So we're gonna, first gonna run through all the different applications that come installed. So if I go under development, we have the Qt stuff that's to be expected. Qt is heavily associated with the KDE project, as I believe all KDE projects are built upon Qt. Under games, we have Steam pre-installed, so that is very welcome. Under graphics, we have just a couple simple things. We have image scanning, document viewer, and an image viewer. Under internet, we have Firefox installed by default, as well as a lot of the KDE utilities, such as KDE Connect, KGit, K Conversation, and we do have QTorrent as our default torrent client. If we go under multimedia, we have a media player, disc burning, a couple more QT things, and then we have VLC media player. Now, personally, I'm probably gonna end up exchanging that out for the MPV player, um, because I just like it better. Now, moving on from here, we have office stuff, Oakler, which is just a PDF viewer, wonderful application, by the way. Under settings, we do have a couple cool things. We have the PAMAC package manager, add remove software right here. PAMAC is actually the brainchild of the Manjaro team. So if I go ahead and open it up, it's a wonderful package manager. One thing I would recommend is check out my videos on the 10 things to do after you install Manjaro, in which I go over everything to get kind of a jump start into the system. And one of the things I do talk about is opening this up, going to preferences, typing in your password, and from here, you could actually enable for the Arch user repository. Now the Arch user repository is awesome. It unlocks a lot more software that you could go ahead and install. And PAMAC, as you can tell, is an AUR helper already installed on your system ready to go. So from there, another Manjaro thing is the Manjaro settings manager. So if you go ahead and open that up, this is where you can do some settings changes that you'd otherwise probably need to do in the terminal, such as your locale settings, language packages, over here, we can actually install and uninstall various kernels. So as we mentioned, this does ship with the 5.10 kernel, but if you wanted to go up to 5.11 or even downgrade to one of these more uh, LTS and recommended kernels, you could go ahead and do that as well. Additionally, within the setting manager, this is where you mess with your uh, drivers and hardware configuration. So here's where you could switch between open source and non-open source drivers. If you have something like a NVIDIA graphics card, for example. Go to close that out and under settings, there's a couple more things such as the notifier KDE settings, stuff like that. But if we go under system, this is where we get a lot of the system tools that's gonna ship with Manjaro. So we have Dolphin as our file manager. We have HTOP info center. If we go ahead and open up the info center, it will bring up our system <laughs> system information. So here you can actually see what exactly, well, what the versions are of everything that you're running. So KDE Plasma 5.21, and we are running the 5.10 kernel. Go to close that out. Let's go back to our system here. Uh, we have the KDE Partition Manager, which is how you manage your disks. We have Console, KSysGuard, and a couple other KDE utilities. Here we also have that system monitor that we were just looking at, as well as Time Shift, which is very important that you set up. I do have a video on that as well. And then we have, of course, the drop-down terminal. And then from there, if we go ahead, go back in here, we have Lost and Found. That's not important. If you click on this Help button right here, it will actually bring up your KDE Help Center. So that's as far as it goes with everything actually on the system. There are some appearance tweaks that Manjaro gives you out of the gate. So if I go ahead and jump into my system settings here, go under appearance, you can see that the global theme that they're using is Breath 2. Usually KDE ships with Breeze out of the gate, but they did change that. As well as adding their little logo to the start menu here. And basically in KDE Plasma, everything is customizable. Just with a right click, configure application launcher. You could actually go ahead and completely change that if you would like to. But ultimately, appearance doesn't really matter because one of the beautiful things about using KDE Plasma is how easy it is to customize. And you're probably going to completely customize it where it's not going to look anything like this. Unless if you do like this out of the gate, then you're set up and you're good to go. Now, a quick little overview of the UI down here. We have our calendar, so click that. That's what you get. 
you have all your little tray icons down here. So this is your status and notifications, where you can enable, disable notifications, your night control color. So that's what will give it that kind of uh, orange tint. It's better on your eyes. Uh, brightness battery, discs and devices, KDE Connect, as well as the keyboard indicator. So th that's really it as far as Manjaro goes. It is a wonderful distribution, especially if you're somebody who's newer to Linux and you're looking to make that jump into an Arch ecosystem. Now I will note I've been running either Manjaro or some other Arch-based distribution for some time, and even with the rolling release structure, I have not had anything crash on me in quite a while, at least as far as being directly related to an actual update. So basically, even for somebody who's new, something like Manjaro is a perfect option, especially if you want access to the wide array of software in the Arch user repository. I would definitely recommend starting with something like Manjaro because it is just set up absolutely perfect and it has the tools you need that if you're not somebody who likes to go into the terminal at least for the most part you'll never even have to open it really because of the uh, graphical pac-man package manager manjaro uh, settings and the whole plethora of kde system settings so with that said i do hope you all enjoyed this video please leave a comment down below telling me whether or not if you are going to be using kde plasma or what desktop environment you're using and maybe why you prefer that. I know I really enjoy KDE Plasma, especially for the uh, KWIN extensions. You can basically add an extension or an add-on for any little element in your system. That's one of the reasons I like KDE Plasma. Uh, if you like this video, please do give it a like. If you absolutely hate it, go ahead and give it a dislike. Make sure you are subscribed and you ring that bell so you do not miss any future uploads. I hope you have a beautiful day and goodbye.